Okay, um, we spent the past several videos now working with the binomial theorem and what we're going to do in this video and the next um, several videos that follow is consider Taylor series and that will enable us to derive a formula for the binomial expansion when we have negative exponents. And again, the reason why we're taking the time and the trouble um, to go through these is that in the next videos following this, we're going to start dealing with generating functions and we need this background to be able to handle them. And we want to be able to develop both ordinary generating functions as well as exponential generating functions because these are powerful tools uh, that can help us to solve some of the more complicated combination problems as well as some of the more complicated permutation problems. So, okay, here in this video, what we're considering is essentially a power series expansion, and that is this. Is it possible to um, take functions, or at least certain functions, and to be able to express that function in terms of a power series expansion? For example, um, for the cosine of x, where x is any angle that is measured in uh, um, radians, this can be expressed in terms of this power series. like this, and it keeps on going. So if you have any um, angle x, where x is expressed in radians, um, plug it into this, and it will give you the cosine for x. Um, we know the cosine of 0 is 1, and sure enough, plug x in, all these terms are 0, and you get 1 or the cosine of um, pi over 6, that equals 1 half. Put 1 half in for x, and you'll get an expression here that's very close to, to 1 half. Or the cosine of, um, say, pi over 4, that is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, put pi over 4 in here and you will get an expression that comes very close to the square root of 2 over 2 in value. So the cosine of x can be expressed in terms of this infinite series, so can the sine of x, and the question is what other functions can we express like this? And first of all, if this is going to have any value for us, as we're adding an infinite amount of terms, obviously it has to converge to some number. If it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and diverges, then it's just going to simply go and expand out to infinity, and that's not going to have any useful value. And when you take calculus and you study infinite series in more detail, you see that there are various tests that you can devise to determine whether it's an expanding um, series that just diverges or whether it actually converges to a certain number. We're not going to do that in this video. What we can do is, is this. Let's ask ourselves this question. If we have a function, and indeed that function can be expressed as a power series like this, um, what properties would we expect it to have? So we can look at this and we can say, well, if we evaluated that function where x is 0, then we'd expect that to equal just some constant. All these are going to be 0, so you'd expect that f of 0 is going to be some constant um, that we're calling a sub 0 now. What about the derivative of the function? Here, f prime of x that will equal a1 plus 2 times a2 of x plus 
3 times a3 x squared plus 4 a4 x cubed. The next term will be a5x to the fifth, so we can write that in here. We have enough room. And that derivative will be 5 a sub 5 times x to the fourth, and so on. It'll keep going on out like that. What would it be if we evaluated the first derivative or x equals 0? Now, all of these terms here, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So we'd expect then that when we take the first derivative of the function and evaluate at x equals 0, we would expect that we would get this value, a sub 1. Let's keep everything in focus here. Okay, here we're saying that if we take the first derivative of this function and evaluate when x equals 0, we would expect to get the value a1, which is our next coefficient of x. Now if we take the second derivative, what are we going to have? Here we have the second derivative for x. There's the first derivative. That's going to be 0 because that's a constant. So now we're going to have 2 a sub 2 times x plus, take this exponent down, and we're going to have 3 times 2 times a sub 3 times x plus, now we take this exponent down, we have 4 times 3 a4 times x squared plus, take this exponent down, we have 5 times 4 times a sub 5 times x cubed. Plus, we'd have other terms as well. Okay, what happens now if we take that second derivative and evaluate it when x equals 0? And this here is actually just 2a2. This is written incorrectly because this has to an exponent of 1, so we take the derivative, we just get a constant. So this is just 2a2. And the rest of these are correct. So if we take the derivative now, when x equals 0, we have... So we see that this coefficient, a sub 2, that is equal to the second derivative of the function evaluated when x is at 0 divided by 2. Let's go ahead now and take the third derivative. That's 0. This now, that's just going to be 1. So we have 3 times 2 times a sub 3 plus, here we're going to have 4 times 3 times 2 times a sub 4 times x to the first power plus, from this term, 5 times 4 times 3 times a sub 5 times x squared, plus there's a bunch of other terms here as well. But what happens now if we evaluate the third derivative when x is 0? That's 0, that's 0, and we have this. So we can say that This coefficient up here is going to be equal to 
the third derivative of the function evaluated when x is 0 divided by like this. Let's just do a couple more of these and or one or two more, see if a pattern starts to emerge. It's hard to keep everything in focus here. Okay, here's the third derivative of the function. Let's take the fourth derivative of the function. That's zero. That's just one now, so that's four times three times two times a sub four plus from this term we'll have five times four times three times a sub five times x plus there's all these other terms here that we've been ignoring. We want to know though what is going to be the value of the fourth derivative when x is equal to zero. That's zero. All these remaining terms here are going to have x's in them, so all those are going to be zero. So we have this term. So a4, that is equal to, and actually we want to put these in parentheses. When I write it like this, that means that we're taking the fourth derivative of the function. We are not raising the function to the fourth power. We use the parentheses here to denote that. So a to the four is equal to the fourth derivative of the function set at equal to zero divided by four times three times two times one. And lo and behold, a five that will be the fifth derivative of the function when x is 0 divided by 5 factorial. a6 that will be the sixth derivative of the function evaluated at 0 divided by 6 factorial. So what this means is that we haven't proven now that a function can be written, can, that any function can be expressed in terms of a power series, but what we have shown is that indeed if this is true, if this is a true expression, then we can write it like this. Let's just make some room here. F of x equals a naught, and that was just the function evaluated at zero, plus a one that was just the first derivative of the function when the function is set at 0 times x plus a2 that's the second derivative of the function evaluated at 0 divided by 2 or if we want we can say divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus a3 we found out what that is that is right here that's the third derivative of the function evaluated when x is 0 divided by 3 factorial so we go back to here a3 that is the third derivative when x is 0 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed. And you see the 
pattern comes out to be nice and neat and clean. The next term, a sub 4, that is the fourth derivative when x equals 0 divided by 4 factorial times x to the fourth. a5, that is the fifth derivative evaluated when x equals 0 divided by 5 factorial times x to the fifth. And it keeps going like that. So what we have shown then that indeed if this is a true expression for some function then we have determined what these constants are and we have written it like this. And again when you take calculus um, you will study infinite series and you will um, determine the circumstances in which those series do converge to definite values and in fact infinite series in those circumstances can be used to represent uh, different types of functions. Now what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to take this information and we're going to say well suppose our function is this a plus x just a binomial expression raised to the nth power. If we use this formula here, what kind of an answer will we get? And that's what we're going to address in the next video. So come back and this right here then we should be able to find out using this expression and we can relate it to the binomial uh, theorem or the binomial expansion that we've dealt with in the previous integrals in the previous videos here and see how they compare to one another. Then also what we can do is we can find out the answer. Well suppose f of x equals a plus x to a negative exponent. Using this format here we can get an expression for this now. So come back and join us with those videos and we'll work these problems out. Then once we finally do that we we'll start to develop the background, we can start getting into generating functions. So come back and join us for those videos and then we'll try and get back to solving problems.